Cool. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Maurice Taylor. I'm here with my mentor, Dudley Irvin. Mr. Irvin, and today uh, he's giving me the feedback and the reflection of my lesson I taught. That was for Module 8, Unit 2, Activity 1, and my lesson was off of a standard mastery prep that we have coming up. Well, Mr. Taylor, I want to jump right into it. Um, I thought the lesson was uh, very, very um, accessible for the students. Uh, you moved at a pace that was not too fast and not too slow. So um, the students were able to um, grapple with concepts as well as uh, be engaged uh, with the lesson that was taught. Um, so I just wanted to go over some things. In the very beginning of the lesson when you had mentioned, um, when you had asked a couple of students to share their answers to the problem, um, they gave two conflicting answers and your response to them um, didn't allow for them really to share how they got their answer and why one answer was correct and why one was incorrect. So I think oftentimes in classes you have students who um, would like to say something or maybe they know that their friends would be able to say something in the classroom so they're not going to speak because I know she's going to say something, I know he's going to say something. But yet at the end of the day, the person who speaks may have had the answer to the question that the student who didn't speak had. And so if you address the students who raised their hand, and even though they have conflicting answers, um, and you show why the answer is wrong for that student who didn't raise their hand, but shared the same answer as the student who did, you know, say, all right, you know what, I want to participate and give my answer. That student who didn't raise their hand is still learning why their question was, why they, why they answered the question wrong, or where they went at in the process that led them to an incorrect answer. You know, it's not always about right or wrong answers. Um, you know, so when students give an incorrect answer, um, it should be um, recognized, but that should also be an opportunity for you to be able to uh, figure out where their misconception was, what did they do wrong in the process of completing the answer to, um, to get the question wrong. It gives you just a better, gives you more data, more information on that student's overall understanding. Um, with the second thing I noticed, there was a formula that you put on the board uh, dealing with the absolute value. And um, with that, students were also given answers. But I didn't see where you were putting those answers or those values into the formula to actually show the students how to input or substitute the given values into the formula so they could have it solved. I think that would have been helpful for the students to see you as the teacher, you as the expert, um, use the formula to arrive at an answer. Right? I noticed, I think, uh, the boy Jaden had mentioned that he used the wrong formula and you went over there and you talked to him and that was an excellent thing for you to do um, for him because he, he was one of those students that definitely was vocal about, oh, I did it all wrong, I used the wrong formula. But remember, there are many students who are so nervous and, and scared about math, they already have um, preconceived notions about mathematics, they hate math, um, and so you want to make sure that because you know these students may have those type of anxieties about math, you want to make sure that you uh, show them as much as you can uh, with the formula or with anything for that matter so that they could feel that their needs are being met as well. So, quick question. Uh, when it comes to Jaden, mm -hmm. uh, is he someone you would recommend me allowing to actually, or when I want to say allow, like motivate him to work his problem out on the board, although me personally, he's absolutely wrong. Uh, would I be able to use that by allowing him, like, would there be any type of motivation piece in that that I can encourage to get him to do? Yeah, absolutely. Because remember, Jaden is one particular person, but he also represents, his work also represents a lot of the work that the other students may have on their paper, okay. right? So if I'm sitting at the board, if I'm sitting at my desk and I'm shy, or I just don't want to go to the board, and I have my friend, at the board or my classmate at the board doing the work and I'm looking at his work and I'm like yeah he got the same stuff I got or she got the same stuff I got and then it turns out that 
based off of how you ask him questions and analyze his student work that it's wrong. Now, I, as a student who didn't go to the board, I'm, I'm, I'm more engaged now because I want to know, well, why is Mr. Taylor saying his work is wrong, which is the same work I got on my desk, and now I want to know, well, what did I do wrong? Where, where was my, where was, where, what step did I go wrong at? Okay. Right? But where my misconception is. So yes, it's not about, like again, it's not about the wrong answer. You want someone to jump out there and say, look, this is what I did. I know it's right. Even though you know it may be wrong. But and like I said, it's not about wrong. You go got somebody motivated to go to the board and show their work. And, and then it turns out to be incorrect. It's all about how you want to show or address that the answer isn't all the way correct. Right? Never okay. saying, oh, it's wrong. Um, are you serious? Things like that, because that's belittling, and then you'll you, you know you'll put that kid in the shell. But sh having that kid motivated to go to the board, show his work, and then knowing that you, as the expert, are going to show him or her where they went wrong or where they went correct, and then if they is if there is a piece in that problem that is wrong, but all the other stuff starts to look correct, that you can encourage them and say, hey, you're on the right path, but right mm -hmm. here, this is where I noticed this, and then you can ask the class. Anyone, you know, feel free to share. Anyone in here had the same work as, as Jaden? Maybe you want to address that before you go into the work to say if it's right or wrong because if you already say it's wrong before you ask the kids if they had the same answer, right, they're going to be like, nah, I ain't had that answer because they know it's already wrong. Yeah. So as he puts it up there, anyone else? Anybody else have the same answer? Anyone wants to share? Anyone have a different answer? Would the one, Someone who had a different answer would like to come to the board? to show what they did. So now you got all these kids going to the board, you're watching it, you know who's right, you know who's wrong, but you get more engagement that way. Okay. You know, all right. for sure. All right, so, oh, go ahead. Yeah, and I think for the last piece, um, with the word problem with Miss Fitzgerald, um, I think to increase engagement on word problems, knowing that our students struggle with reading comprehension and things of that nature and decoding words and, and things that are un words that are unfamiliar, Try um, getting into the practice of rolling out the question line by line. Okay. So what happens in this case where I think they said Miss Fitzgerald was on her way home taking an Uber after school or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. When you put that line right there, the kids don't know Miss Fitzgerald. They're familiar with an Uber. Right. But there's a story right there. And they can create their own story. They don't know mm -hmm. where the question is going. But they just know, here's Miss Fitzgerald getting in the Uber, headed home after work. Mm -hmm. Kids may say, "Oh, where she work at? Oh, she must work. She must work somewhere far because she got to take an Uber." Oh, well, she could be going, you know, grocery shop or whatever. I don't know. Maybe she's going to a friend's house. Who knows? But now the kids can come up with their own kind of way to choose their own ending to the to the to the question, even though it's math related. But still, you have this discourse where students are able to talk about what they think may come. And now when you follow up that, that, that initial line in the problem, if you could have um, a probing question there, maybe one or two, that now starts to guide them toward the mathematics that they will be seeing at a later time as you continue to roll out the other lines to the word problems. I think the second line mentioned something about um, there's an initial fee of $6, and then the, the, the rate increases at $3.25 per amount. You can turn that into an actual classroom discussion and then gauge to see what students know about flat rates, what students know about um, an additional X amount of dollars per mile, right? And then you can ask them, what do you think the question is going to be? Mm -hmm. Now they're like, they should be more engaged than if it was just a long verbose question where they had to struggle with reading it or maybe not. And then after reading it, because you know you give them maybe a couple minutes, three to five minutes, by the time three minutes is up, they haven't even got past the code in the, 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 the question, or they may get halfway through the question. Um, and so I just think you may get more bang for your buck if you roll out the question and the word problem line by line, followed by probing questions, just to engage them more, to see if they know what's to come. Um, I think you'll get a lot of bang for your buck. But overall, I think it was an awesome lesson. I love to see you interacting with the students. Um, you have no classroom management issues. 
everyone's engaged, everyone loves you, the students love you, you know that. Um, it's just a pleasure to work with you and watch you in action. And I'll be looking forward to the next time to see if you do employ, um, you know, trying to roll out those word problems piece by piece. It's a work in progress, but awesome job nonetheless. All right. Appreciate it, sir. Yes, and sir. that will be it.